The town of Carlisle, nestled in the Cumberland Valley in central Pennsylvania, is home to a quiet army post known as Carlisle Barracks. It is a fairly small post as far as army posts go, but it has a history that looms large over the story of our nation. You may not know it, but Carlisle Barracks once stood at the crossroads of a grand idea. Today we call that idea democracy, but the outcome wasn't at all the sure thing we know today. The American Revolution didn't start here, but some may argue it was, in part, won here. And as for these United States, well, we didn't build the railroads in Carlisle, but we did train the soldiers who, as part of the United States Army Cavalry, played their role to unite this country. Later, we learned something of ourselves and other cultures when the Carlisle Indian Industrial School was located here. And today, the search for knowledge and understanding continues as men and women from all over the world come here to learn the art of promoting peace by intelligent and adequate preparation to repel aggression throughout the world. Established in 1751 by the British to support the operations against the French during the French and Indian War, Carlisle Barracks has been consistently at the crossroads of important events in American history. From the founding of the School of Artillerists in 1777 to the U.S. Army War College of today, Carlisle Barracks has educated and trained our soldiers, educated a nation of Native Americans, and promoted peace through strength here at the schools at Carlisle Barracks. In December 1776, the Continental Congress resolved that a magazine of ammunition and arms with a proper laboratory or manufacturing plant be formed at Carlisle, then known as Washingtonburg. General George Washington wrote a detailed letter to Colonel Benjamin Flower indicating that furnaces would be erected to cast cannon and ammunition. Further, he indicated that the combined ordnance facilities at Carlisle will consist of various shops for the manufacture of cannon, shot, harness, barrels, nails, and gun carriages. The letter to Flower also indicated that Captain Isaac Corrin would serve as commander of the School of Artillerists and Laboratory at Carlisle, and that he receive a sum of $25 per month additionally for teaching the laboratory art to such officers as shall be sent to him. This was the very first school of the U.S. Army, the Laboratory for Artillery Study, School of Artillerists. Later that year, the Hessian Powder Magazine was constructed for use as a storage facility for sulfur, brimstone, and other explosive material. The Continental Congress wrote to Mr. James Wilson, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, and General John Armstrong to find the most secure and convenient place for such magazines. The magazine is thought to have been built by approximately 40 Hessian soldiers captured by Washington's troops at the Battle of Trenton in December 1776. The Carlisle Furnace, located at Boiling Springs, furnished many cannon castings for the Public Works. The Public Works Ordnance Manufacturing Plant at Carlisle played an important role in supplying artillery material to Henry Knox, Washington's first Secretary of War and Chief of Artillery. Colonel Flower forged ahead to manufacture arms and ammunitions here at Carlisle. The drift of war was moving toward Philadelphia after the fall of New York, a major blow to the fledgling American Army. The Army turned to Carlisle, which was still far enough into the untamed frontier, so as to be used as a safe haven, and nothing less than the future of the new republic hinged on the safety of this new public works and artillery school training facility. Practice must complete what speculation only begins. The knowledge you have gained, it is expected, of the laboratory art, as well as your experience in life, must convince you of the truth of these general positions. The knowledge you have gained by your residence at Carlisle is equal to the expectation formed when the matter of sending you there was adopted. General Horatio Gates, Chief of Artillery to Artillery Officers then in attendance as students, War Office, April 28, 1778. It was recognized that application was the best method of instruction in this first school of the Army, and this theory of learning continues today. <laughs> 